Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Psalm 119 is a long psalm. So we are going to take it in chunks. It's going to take us a while, probably a week or more. It is a uh, Psalm 119 is a long song, psalm. Um, and I was reading up on it this morning a little bit. And uh, the commentator was saying that it's arranged in an acrostic pattern. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And this psalm contains 22 units of eight verses each. So, interesting. Um, each of the 22 sections is giving a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and each line in that section begins with that letter. The closest parallel to this pattern in Scripture is found in Lamentations 3, which is also divided into 22 sections. And a few other passages in the Hebrew Scriptures use an ac acrostic pattern. So the Hebrew letter that starts this part of Psalm 119 is Aleph, or Aleph. I don't know if I'm saying it right. <clears throat> a in the Hebrew alphabet. So before we start, we need to ask Jesus for his help. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we come to you this morning and thank you for your Bible. Thank you for giving it to us. And I pray that we will learn of you and your ways and um, that we be more like your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have sent this great passage to us this morning. Teach us your ways, we pray, Jesus. Amen. So here we go. First part of Psalm 119. Joyful people are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. So, survey and polling data constantly shows, if you look in the world, that um, the, the polling demonstrates that those who live in general conformity to God's way of doing things are happier and they enjoy life more. They have a more um, satisfaction out of life. They're more content. Yet the illusion remains for many that uh, a sinful life is more fun, right? And sin is fun. Let's not, let's not uh, water it down, okay? Sinning is fun, but it's such a temporary fix. It's such a temporary distraction. It, sin is a temporary high, and it wears off. We need God to show us the way to a happy life if we really want to be happy people. And verse 1 is saying that the, 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 the happiest people on earth are the ones that follow God's way of living. And... Um, Another way to put it is they're undefiled. So you feel much better when there are not toxins in your body, right? When you, when you feel much better when there's not a malignant cancer in your body. And the reason that we're not happy, the Bible says, is that we do sin and we have that poison in us. And what we have to do is we just got to get that forgiven by the grace and the love of Jesus. And instead of the sin going into our hearts, the Spirit of God comes into our hearts. And the main reason we sin as much as we do is that we just don't know how good it is to follow God. And to know that, we need to know his word because this, this Bible tells us how we can live a happier, more fulfilled life, right? Even with such things as um, the Proverbs say smart things like this, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So, what you want to do is get rid of your anger. The Bible says you'll be a much happier person if you're not an angry person. Here's the reality. Bob Evans on his own can't figure life out. I need help from the outside. So that's why God gave us his word. Apart from being instructed by God, human beings like me don't know the way to happiness. And so that's why joyful are those who obey his laws or keep his laws, right? And search for him with all their hearts. 
here's the deal. Um, when you treasure something, you keep it, right? You hold it close to your heart. Um, so if you are keeping God's ways, that means that God is close to your heart. You want to be like him. There's a desire that God has placed in you. And um, happiness is ascribed, this is a quote, happiness is ascribed to those who treasure up the word of the Lord in their heart. They keep them. And which is implied that they search the scriptures, just like a, a treasure hunter searches for treasure. And they, they love that treasure, so they look for it. And when you find it, you keep it. We must first get a thing before we can keep it. In order to keep it well, we must get a firm grip on it. We cannot keep in the heart that which we do not heartily embrace by the love that we have for it. So that's Spurgeon saying that. So people that keep God's commands want to treasure him. Right? My allergies just acting up this week, guys. I'll take the beautiful warm weather. They're definitely worse. So um, it says in verse 3, this is, a, this is a good verse. Um, those that follow God's ways won't compromise with evil. They will walk only in his paths. So how do we compromise with evil in our day and age? Well, I don't think any of us are going to make a deal with the mafia. We don't know any mafia, right? We, um, we are going to be people that have to watch first our attitudes. Okay? Um, sin isn't just doing something or not doing something okay sin is an attitude of the heart that starts in here or in here your soul and um what happens is that attitude james said um that attitude becomes sin and sin when it is finished leads to the death of something so what you want to do is watch your attitude um the Lord will often, I'll be thinking about something and I'll be getting mad at a person in my head. You know how you do that. The more you think about the matter you get. And then that can often lead to then harsh words when I see that person or sarcasm or some studied contempt of that person that I, I come up with a clever comeback. And it's an attitude of sin before I've even sinned against that person verbally. I'm sinning in my heart, in my head. It's my attitude. It stinks, right? And so... You got to watch your attitude. Sometimes when I'm thinking about a person, I'm getting mad at them, and I'll I'll sense the Lord's spirit in me saying, "Hey, son, getting a little uppity there, aren't you? Calm down. Forgive them again, because the attitude of unforgiveness will lead you to sin. If you study um, that person's hurt against you, you got to give it to God, right? You got to give it to God. Your thought life." is how you can compromise with evil. Because nobody knows your thoughts except you. God knows your thoughts. But um, your thought life is something you're going to have to work on. There's a couple great books about the battlefield of the mind. Um, your, your thought life and what you do in here tells you who you really are. So don't let your thoughts drift into sin, right? Paul said, take your thoughts captive. Examine them. That is a lousy thought. Throw it out, right? Or lock it up, turn the key, throw it away. You got to take your thoughts captive, assess them. That's where sin begins. So don't compromise with evil, verse 3 says. Verse 4 says, God, you've charged us to keep your commandments carefully. The challenge is to, um, to study God's uh, way of living, his, his rules. His, um, and it's not about um, rule keeping. God's not um, going to... Um, give you an A or a B or a C or a D and say, okay, if you got a C, you can't come in to have an A and B's get in. That's not how he does it. Um, Jesus says, if you break one command, you've broken them all. We know that. We're human. We can't keep all God's commands on our own. That's very important to remember. We're going to talk about how we can keep God's commands in a few minutes, okay? But here's what verse 5 answers the question of verse 4. How do we keep God's commands? Okay, verse 5. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your degrees, your, your, your rules, your commandments. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. So um, belief isn't just something here. You act it out, right? But 
Here's the thing. When your heart reflects the character of Jesus Christ, you will naturally keep the commands of God. Remember what Jesus said were the two most important commands of God that unfold all the others. Love God with all you are and love people the same way with all you are. Jesus said, if you could keep those two commands, make the mission of your life to be obsessed with loving God with all you are, your heart, your soul, your will, your mind, your strength, and love people with your heart, your soul, your will, your mind, your strength, what you do, you would take care of all God's commands. The whole Bible fits into four words, love God, love people. And um, so you've got to ask God for the heart of Jesus. Verse 6 says, If my actions would consistently reflect the decrees of God, me and my heart was right, and then I would not be ashamed when I compared my life with your commands. It is a good idea to check your heart to see how you're really doing. I heard one pastor say, most people check their weather apps more than they check their heart. 1 John 1 says, you've got to first admit, right? Admit, believe, commit. Okay, Admit. If we claim we have no sin, we're fooling ourselves. 1 John 1, 8. If we claim we have no sin, we're fooling ourselves. And we're not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 8, you've got to admit you're a sinner. Verse 9, confess it to God. He will cleanse your heart. Once he cleanses your heart, the Holy Spirit moves in and he gives you a new heart. He gives you the heart of Jesus. You used to love doing evil things. Now you don't. It bothers you. That's a good thing. Verse 7 says, As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. If you want to thank God for saving you, you live as you should. His heart in you, helping you live the way you should live. Jesus said, it's pretty simple. If you love me, you'll keep my commands. If I love Sandra, I won't flirt with other women. If I love Sandra, I won't uh, commit adultery and have an affair on her and, and wreck my marriage. If I love my children, I will be a good dad. Um, if I love God, I will be faithful to him. If I love people, I will treat them with respect. It's all about love. It's about your heart's affection for God and for people. His love changing your heart, giving you the character of Jesus, his spirit moving in there, rearranging the selfishness into selflessness, right? And verse 8 says, Then I will obey your decrees. And then this is a pretty real prayer here, verse 8. He finishes this section, the Aleph section, with this. Lord, please don't give up on me. That tells you if somebody really loves God. If you can say, Lord, I want to live the way I should, but I'm having such a hard time, and I really want to, please don't give up on me. You pray this, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. Please purify my heart. Cleanse me from within. Make me more like Jesus. Make me stronger in here. Make me more than I am. My soul is unstable. I am fickled. I'm attention deficit. I'm drawn to the things of this world, and I don't want to be. I want to be strong. I want to be pure. I want to be a light. I want to set an example. I want to serve people. I want to show them what you're like by how I live. I want to show them what you're like by how I love. Um, you say, God, please don't give up on me. Here's the good news. He, Paul said this, not me. He who began the good work in you will carry it on to completion. He's not going to give up on you. And all he needs is your heart toward him to say, Lord, help me, change me, use me, make me better than I am now in my heart. And the Bible says that his grace is sufficient for your weakness. Um, if your heart is toward God, you want to change. If you want to be closer to God, your sin bothers you. 
And that is a good thing because that's a sign that God's spirit lives in you and he is reacting to your sin. And since it bothers him, it bothers you. So don't get discouraged when you occasionally sin and mess up. Go to the Father, admit your sin, um, admit your sin and just say, please cleanse me. And he says, I will, I have, I forgave you from the cross. Let's try again, right? So if your sin bothers you, folks, it's a good thing. Remember how much Jesus loves you. Remember that he went to the cross. Your sin is nailed to the cross. You bear it no more. Um, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. So let's pray for the heart of God. And this is a way to help you pray. Um, listen to this song. Get it in your head and ask God to change your heart. Let's listen.
And I am ready to do your will. Make me ready to do your will. Great song. Get it on a playlist. Make it your prayer. Check your heart. He'll cleanse your heart. He'll give you a new heart. That's what it's about. Um, hey, come to church. Come to church on Sunday. It's this week. Yeah, on the Hub Lawn. We'd love to see you. 9 or 10.30. Just show up. We love you. And uh, we want to see you there. And with the, with the variant and the way it's spreading... I would come to church this Sunday. Don't put it off because you might not be able to come again until the summer. They might uh, they might put in new restrictions next week. So see you this Sunday. Let's celebrate. God's love is great. He's with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Turn his heart towards you and give you a peaceful, joyful, restorative weekend. God is with you. His love is great. Don't worry. You're in God's hands. Nothing to worry about. preparing something to share with the world. These things will make sense to some, but not to others. I'm here to start a revolution. for women, for the vulnerable. Blasphemy is not harmless. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. They're martyrs with a persecution complex. I want to kill him. Do you want to be healed? <laughs> I have something that's open to all people. Get up and walk. If he was supposed to be healed, God would have done it himself. That's an interesting point. Your fame is spreading the good kind. You have certainly livened things up around here. World travels fast. Fellow cousin. My heart is yours. My life is yours. 
John the Baptizer was taken into custody. Jesus of Nazareth, we finally meet. David, Goliath, maybe there is hope for the little. What we're doing here will last for generations. I want my people to participate in the healing of the world. I do not feel very much worthy. Who's worthy of anything? You? The one comfort we have is to know that we're doing it together. It's not now. When? I'm here to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. I make a way for people to access that kingdom. In this world, bones will still break. Hearts will still break. But in the end, yeah! the light will overcome darkness. Hey there, it's Dallas. I'm the creator of The Chosen, and if you haven't seen season one, or if you want to see season two, you gotta get The Chosen app. It's free. It's easy. It connects directly to your streaming device. You don't even need a subscription. Go check it out.